Hello everyone out there, this is Pastor Tony Galanti coming to you again from Prophecy in Christ himself. Prophecy in Christ. Um, as I mentioned earlier in my video before, <clears throat> the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of Christ. And only true prophecy comes from Jesus Christ himself, which is through the word of God. Okay? Anything else that comes out out of anything else or anybody's mind or whatever, or they don't they just they just blow and smoke because the the Bible's completed, it's canon's completed. From Genesis to the book of Revelation, it's completed. All right. I've I've said that in my in other videos as well, too. But <clears throat> today I want to talk to you about um, a topic, all right. You might call this evangelism. You may not call it evangelism. You may say, I'm not an evangelist. You may say whatever you want. You know, everybody's got different spiritual gifts, all right? Um, and if you want to see your fundamental gifts, as they call them, it'll list it in uh, Romans chapter 12, okay? You know, some, some have the gift of uh, so-called prophecy and understanding the truths of the scripture. Some are teachers. Some are rulers. Some have the gift of mercy. Some have the gift of giving you know, uh, the gift of service and so on, right? The gift of mercy. Um, so, uh, it's really, really raining bad out there. I hope it's not going on my video right now, the sound of the rain there. But let me tell you this. Um, this is the work of the church. The work of the church is to bring the word of God to other people, others. You may say to me, well, yeah, you're a minister. You've been a pastor. You've been, uh, uh, yeah, well, guess what? It's not just the pastor's job, because I'm going to tell you, a lot of pastors are really terrible at this. They're not bringing the Word of God to a lot of people. They don't do it one-on-one. -on -one. They don't do it from the pulpit. Some of them just talk about, I was in the church one time, and the guy was telling, saying something like, uh, this church was part of the Civil War. I mean, in the Civil War, they took pieces of wood from this to fight the Civil War. And I'm like, okay, I got the point. It's historical. There's nothing wrong with it. I love history, incidentally. But <clears throat> I'm not trying to be insensitive, but nothing about the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel, the good news, that somebody came, and his name is Jesus Christ, from heaven to die on the cross, perfect God-man, to die on the cross, shed his blood for the, for the uh, provision that you have, for the, for the forgiveness of sin through him. And all you got to do is put your faith and trust in him. And I don't mean that in a very cheap manner, like, well, I believe in George Washington, and I believe in, you know, whoever, you know, whoever the heck else. This is serious stuff with Jesus Christ, no joke. But Jesus Christ here in Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 16, I probably, I'm going to read them all to, to 20, all right? Verses 16 to 20. And he says here, it says here, this is called the Great Commission. Great Commission. And a lot of churches don't even talk about the Great Commission. Just come to church and be faithful and get, put your money in a plate and that's it. And some of the churches just want money in the plate. That's all they care about. I'm not joking. All right? I'm not a person who's going to pull any punches with nobody. All right? If they want to talk to me, they can talk to my face. I'm right here. You know, whatever. I'm not challenging them or challenging them to a duel or anything stupid like that. But I'm just telling them I can point to the Word of God and this is what it says. Okay? Jesus is telling his disciples, all right? But the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain, which Jesus had designated. In other words, Jesus told them after the resurrection, I'm going to be there, so on and so forth. So Jesus des des designated it, okay? And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some were doubtful, okay? In other words, yeah, they saw him, okay, okay? Um, they worshipped him like God, but they were like, well, what, what am I going to do now? What do I do now? I don't get, what am I supposed to do here? You know, that kind of thing. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, this is what he says, Jesus' words. All, and don't say because they are 11 disciples. You're a disciple if you believe in Christ. A disciple means a disciplined learner, somebody who wants to learn about Christ or about God. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Word of God. That's a di disciple, all right? Another word for you could be a saint. You could be a saint. 
In other words, a, a disciple is a saint. Not like, you know, the saint this and saint that. Some churches believe in. I'll get into that some other time, but I have firm evidence that if you're a believer in Christ, a true believer in Christ, you're a saint. Okay? So it says here, this is words from right from Jesus. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority. Okay? And Jesus says to them, and to us, because we're, we need to apply the word of God, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. All of them. Even the ones that you might consider your enemy, you go and try to make disciples out of those. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So what does this baptism mean? You baptize them first, you give them the gospel, they need to be baptized, and then, because Jesus Christ commands baptism and also communion, so that's part of being a disciple, all right? Now, let me ask, let me mention this to you. If you're a disciple, if you're a believer in Christ, and you're not baptized, and you didn't have communion, well, let's say, and you die, where do you go? You go to be with the Lord, because you know what? It didn't happen yet, all right? But that doesn't mean you stall baptism. That doesn't mean, and that doesn't mean infant baptism either. Like, I was a baby when I was baptized, because you didn't even know who Jesus Christ was. Well, your parents did, but you know what? <laughs> if they were really disciples, they would look at this and say, you know what? That's not right. Something wrong here. I got to go to a church. It says, I first become a believer and, a knowledge, and have a knowledge of who Christ is, and then I get baptized. That's the best way and the right way, biblically, okay? But Jesus says here, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. They're talking about the triune Godhead. Three persons in one God. Okay? Three persons in one God. <clears throat> now, some people have trouble with the triune, you know, the trinity or the triunity. Okay? Um, you know, they'll use the egg. They'll say, okay, it has a shell and then it has a white and it has a a yolk. All right, that's that's true. Or water is another one. Okay, you know you could either have steam, all right, and you could have regular water, and if you freeze it, you have ice. That's another you know not analogy of it. But the best analogy that I believe is right in the scripture called the light. God is light, and within Him there is no darkness at all. Okay, if you have to make white light, light white light literally. You have to have uh, blue light, green light, and red, red light. Blue light, green light, and red light. And then you can have white light. You can make white light. Right? Those are the three lights that have to, the three types of light that have to come together to make white light. And white light is clear and clean and, you know, fresh and, and so on and so forth and pure. If you... You know, if, if you really want to think of this, um, to some old fash older fashioned colored TVs, if you turn them off, you could see the flashes of um, green, blue, and red light. And you'll see that's the, that's what makes, you can have white light on your television set, you know, showing you something, you know, maybe be a piece of, somebody has a piece of paper and they show you, it took all three of those lights to make that piece of paper white on your television set make white light. So realize that the tr Christ is talking about all three. Okay? Some people, if you took one of them away, if you could take one of them away, it wouldn't be God. If you took the Holy Spirit away from the Father and the Son, it wouldn't be God. If you took the Son away from the Father and the Holy Spirit, it wouldn't be God. If you took the Father away from the Son and the Holy Spirit, it wouldn't be God either. Some churches some false cults call themselves churches do that so be prepared be aware be prepared be um discerning okay all right and then what else did jesus say about after you baptize them teaching them to observe all that i command you teaching them the word of god teaching them my bible okay and lo i am with you Always, even to the end of the age. Which, that, what's that mean? The end of the age 
See, he's talking to the 11 disciples, but to the end of the age means me and you right now. You see? The end of the age. It's not just 11 disciples. Those 11 disciples have already passed, and they're with the Lord. But you know what? It's talking about us here. Jesus had to, he was, he was just so perfect with his words, because he is perfect. He's totally sinless. Absolutely God. Okay? So, let me say this. Why am I bringing this up? Because I have, I, I love to bring the gospel message, the death, burial, and resurrection, and, you know, talking about the blood of Christ to other people. Some people actually love to hear it. Some people don't want to hear it. Some people kind of get, they want to say things like, who is he to bring religion to me or to bring religion to other people? And he's, he's, he's creating this, this, some people actually get jealous of this. I'm not joking. And they get nervy too. And you know what? You know what I told them? I had a man tell me that one time. As a matter of fact, I think he was a, uh, a server, a waiter, whatever you want to call him. He said that to me one time, and I was like, hey, wait a minute. You call yourself a Christian, and yet you don't even know what the Bible teaches about this. The Bible teaches that I am supposed to do this, and so are you, but you want to know something? You're not doing it, and you're calling yourself a Christian. That's not right. We're all commanded to do this, one way or the other. I'm not trying to throw guilt and guilt trips on people. I'm trying to bring the truth out to people to open their eyes so they will get to heaven. I don't have, you know, I, in, in practicality, I don't have to do this. But you want to know something? I have to do this because I'm called to do it. And I want to do it. And I love doing it. So all of us need to do this. All of us. Some of us are a little slower about it. We have a different style. We're like more of a uh, how do I say it to you? We we want to know the person a little bit better, right? But let me tell you a cliche in Christianity. You've got to be in the spirit to bring Christ to people. That's the biggest, ridiculous, most ridiculous cliche, cliche I've ever heard. That's a way, it's a cliche of control. I've heard ministers saying that to the people, you know, the, the parishioners, whatever. And it's not, it's ridiculous. Because you want to know something? When you're bringing Christ to other people, you're doing it in the spirit. If they reject you and can't stand you for it, that's their problem. But you didn't do anything wrong. You did something right and correct. I mean, it's not like you're cursing at the person or doing something nasty like that. That's crazy stuff, you know. But what you, what you have to do is bring the gospel, bring these words to, to other people and, let, and open their eyes. This is very, very, very important. But let me let me show you what, what Jesus also says to his disciples in Luke chapter. You know, sometimes people are afraid of bringing the gospel, bringing God to other people. I mean, when I, I like I, I you know I love I, I love to say the word God, but I want to say Jesus Christ because I want to be specific about the Christian religion, okay, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them, okay. If you go to Luke chapter six. Verses 22 and 23, listen to what Jesus says when you bring good news to people, the gospel to people. Blessed are you when men hate you and ostracize you and cast insults at you, okay? And spurn your name as evil. Oh, he's a pain in the, look, he's, he's thinking, he, he's thinking he could change my, no, I'm not trying to change nobody. I'm trying to let the Lord work in that person's life, okay? And don't look at me. Forget me. I don't care if you know who I am or not. Of course, my name is Tony Galanti, but the thing is, it doesn't matter who I am. It matters what the Word of God says, you know? Okay? For the sake of the Son of Man. In other words, I'm doing, when somebody does this, when, when you're doing this for the sake of the Son of Man, bringing the gospel to other people, this is what Jesus said to his disciples. All right. This is what he said. He says, be sad. No, he doesn't say be sad. He says, be glad in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. I don't want to remain rewards. Yes, you do. 
You know why? Because you're going to take that reward and you're with the Lord and give it back to him and glorify him more. How about those people? Another cliche. I don't want any rewards. That's false humility. That's the kind of humility that Paul couldn't stand. All right? The apostle couldn't stand that false humility. He says that's just ridiculous, basically. You want a reward so you can give it to the Lord and glorify him even more, you know? Okay. All right. It's for, behold, your reward is great in heaven for... In the same way, their fathers used to treat the prophets. Okay, so, you witness to people, you bring Christ to people, you evangelize, whatever you want to call it, you just talk about Jesus, all right? In a good way, bringing the gospel forward, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, talking about the blood of Christ, and somebody doesn't like you for it. Take, or or so some people are going to love you for it, or like you even more for it, all right? Or be glad for it. And some people are going to forget who you are. They're going to move on their way, and they're going to grow in the Lord, because when they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, guess what happens? The Holy Spirit indwells them. The Holy Spirit's in, in me, indwelling me. And if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit indwells you too. So whether they remember my name or not, it doesn't make a difference to me, really, all right? What makes a difference to me is I want, I want, but even more so, Jesus Christ wants to see them grow in the faith. That's what he wants, okay? So he, Jesus is just basically saying, hey, don't get discouraged. Be glad. I'm telling you this is the way it works, you know? And realize, Jesus went through a magnitude of all of this stuff. He died. He, he was, he, you know, Jesus, they, you know, a lot of people think that Jesus Christ actually died three deaths, Okay? Because the crown of thorns on his head would have killed an average man. Supposedly, it would have killed, cut off all his nerve endings, right? To the brain, the head, or something like that. It would, it would, it would do havoc on a person. So you had, they put a crown of thorns on his head, right? They beat him, all right, with the cat and nine tails. They beat him so bloody that you couldn't even recognize him, all right? That could have killed an average man, too. And then they crucified him, all right? And he died and bled for us, and he suffered a great deal for us. And sometimes we're so afraid of suffering a little bit, or I'm scared, you know, in that respect. It doesn't work that way. This is Christianity. It says that when we go through suffering, we suffer, uh, we, 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 we have a fellowship with Christ in his suffering, you know. Um, so just realize that. Be encouraged. Bring, bring, bring the gospel to others. Bring the gospel to others. You know, um, this is a lifetime thing to do. It's not something you, you know, just you know, do as a pastor. And if you don't have a church or you don't write a book or whatever, you know, you just forget about it. No, it's a lifetime thing. You know, and you need to bring this to your relatives, too. Some of them are going to think you're kooky, and some of them are not going to think you're kooky, and that's okay. But because according to this, it says you need to be glad in that day. All right? All right. Again, subscribe. Tell other people about this, you know, uh, this video. Please send it on to a couple of friends and, you know, get more. I, I need the views. I need the subscriptions. But I'm not doing it for that. Okay? If I get nothing out of it, at least the truth is brought forward. You understand that? There are times, let me give you an example of this. There are people who are so, how do I say it to you? They are so uh, popular in America and throughout the world, but their message is like sand. It's not biblical. As a matter of fact, some of them even hold up the Bible, say, this is my Bible, and so on and so forth, and they never open it. Okay, fine. And they talk, but they don't give a chapter and verse. They don't do any of that. I'm giving you a chapter and verse here. This is what you, we all need this, okay? Now, you get these people who are doing such things like this, and they're, what are they doing? They, they, they're not feeding you anything. They're making you feel good at the time, but they're not feeding you anything. 
and they're popular. But you know what? It's the Word of God that's got to go forward. It's this book that's got to go forward, not the person's name and not the shiny face or harsh shiny face or whoever it is. It's the Word of God that's got to go forward. And you know what? If a person, this is what the Old Testament prophets faced. They could, they could speak about God as a prophet. They could be rejected by their own nation completely. And then the enemy comes in and takes their nation. And then they try to, to bring the God to these, this nation. And they could be rejected. Too. They could reject him too. It doesn't matter how many times you get rejected. It matters how faithful you are before God himself. God himself is what counts. Got it? Okay. I love you all. Thank you very much for everything. Um, try to have a blessed day. Um, you know, this is stuff to make you strong. All right? This is meat. This is not milk. This is meat. So some of it may be a little tough to understand, you know, to digest. But try to stick with this. I promise you, you become a much stronger person, much stronger Christian. Because I love you all, and I mean that from my heart. Okay? God bless you all. And... Um, have a great day. Bye-bye now.